Welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful almost spring day. And you might say, well, Stoney, what's an almost spring day? You know, that's one of those days where it's still winter time, but all the signs of spring are starting to show up. We have the birds singing and building nests in the background. We've got our trees budding out. The grass is starting to get green, which Eli loves because that means it's time to start mowing. You know, <laughs> But I like it because I don't have to ride the mower. But uh, anyway, so it's one of those days where you start thinking, man, spring's right around the corner and you start making a list of all the things that you're going to do this spring. Now, what do we need to be able to do, though, if we're going to take our puppies with us to do those activities, is we need to be able to get those dogs lined out. We need to get them to where they'll come when they're called, be still when they're told, and have good manners. And that requires some formal training. But I'm here to tell you, what we have to do with our formal training is make sure that we get our pre-springtime socialization out of the way. Because in the wintertime, I know you folks are, you're working your dogs, you're in your garage, you're in your kitchen, you're in your yard, and you're working on sit and down and come and heal. And uh, listen, that's great. And your dog can have a pretty high success rate at it. Hey, Eli, what happens when they get out around a lot of other dogs? Nothing works. Nothing works. <laughs> that's the most frustrating thing in dog training. I know, especially if you're watching YouTube. <laughs> but the fact is that nothing works. Right? When you have a a puppy and you're sitting there you've got your clicker out you've got your treats out you've got your leash out you've got all, all the stuff that you see all the professional dog trainers on YouTube doing <laughs> and then the first time you go to the park in the springtime your dog just looks at you and says do what come to you no I'm gonna go over there and play with those dogs <laughs> I'm not gonna do, this isn't your yard this isn't the this isn't the the kitchen you know and that's so frustrating guys I know because I get emails all the time hey Stoney we've been trying this and trying that but our dogs won't pay attention when we go out in public well, that's because it's really hard for you guys to get the requisite amount of socialization. And uh, that's, that's true. It's not just for you novice dog trainers. It's for professional dog trainers, too. So here, like, of course, we work on formal stuff, right? We work on getting our dogs to come and to be still and to have good manners, have a good vocabulary. But I've said it a million times. No matter how good a trainer I am or Eli is or my son George is, which we're all pretty decent dog trainers, you know, we can't do enough with a dog by ourselves to make that dog be able to perform with speed and precision under high levels of environmental distraction minus practicing in an environment that has high levels of environmental distraction. So what allows a dog to be able to perform at a high level in a broad range of environments is generally referred to as socialization. Now, when I talk about socialization, I have kind of a broad ranging definition, uh, and some people have a little bit more narrowly focused, but we all have the same three things to work with. We have interspecies socialization, which is dogs learning to interact with other dogs. We have intraspecies socialization, which is dogs learning how to act with people and other animals. And then we have environmental socialization. We're trying to help puppies develop uh, positive expectation of new experiences. Whether that new experiences are related to meeting other dogs or people or going into a wide ranging set of physical circumstances. We want the dog to look at us and look at the environment and think, oh, well, this will probably work out to our advantage. And that's really important, guys. But what we're going to talk about today is not just the upside of socialization, but kind of the downside of socialization, too, where a dog learns that sometimes it's going to be put in situations that, uh, well, it's just not 100% fun. Sometimes a dog's going to have to do things to the exclusion of its natural propensity to interact with an environment or something in the environment. And that's the important part of socialization that I think gets missed whenever we're talking about early dog training. So let's see who we've got here. Let's. Uh, Let's get a young dog first. We've got a 12-week-old golden doodle around here. Hey, Bluebell! <laughs> little Bluebell! Come here! Okay, so here's a little Bluebell. She's 12 weeks old. Now, if you'll notice, Bluebell just kind of ran right over here, and there's a lot of other dogs around. Okay, so let's see what all we've got. We've got Mr. No Names, 15 weeks old. We have Oliver, who's about six months. We have Athena. She's around five months, give or take. And, uh... Got a couple other dogs, and I'll just talk to talk about them as they pop up. But so Bluebell was over here socializing with her friends. See how she's indifferent to these other dogs? Norton here, he's a he's a, a geriatric dog, and Oliver's a young pubescent dog. And see how Bluebell's just fine around these dogs? Okay, Mr. No Name, 
Mr. No Name can come over here. And you see how, look, when I'm talking to these dogs, they're excited about seeing me because they're so well socialized to all the other dogs that being around another dog is not like novel. It's not like a new experience. And that's what you run into. When you have a puppy that doesn't have the proper amount of socialization when it's young and you finally put it around some other dogs, it's going to have a really hard time paying attention because its natural instinct is to gravitate towards other dogs. Now, look here. What Bluebell has done is she said, come over here. She's willingly got on the leash. Oliver's over here. And like it'd be perfectly normal for Bluebell to want to spend time with Oliver to the exclusion of me. That's what gets you when you go out. If you don't have enough socialization, you've been working in your driveway and your dog's paying attention to you. As soon as they see a handsome older boy dog, <laughs> they run off, which is understandable, right? So let's see if I can get Bluebell to come over here. So there's my interspecies socialization going on. <clears throat> Now I'm going to come over here and we're going to talk about environmental socialization. So I'll put a dog in a position like this where like I've placed an impediment into her environment and she says, well, Stoney, I don't know if I can do that. Maybe like faced with something hard like this, she might just want to go back over there and play with the other dogs. And I say, well, no, look, you have to understand that when we're doing stuff, you don't just get to do the easy stuff. You have to do the hard stuff. And that is where proper socialization kind of gets off the rails for most people because what you guys think about doing is taking your dog places to socialize or to train. And what I'm trying to explain to you is that the socialization is, is, is what allows the formal training to work. Right? So this is a formal training thing that I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to get her to understand that I want her to, to conquer this impediment. But there's also socialization elements to it. She has to be around these other dogs, right? So she has to have interspecies socialization. She's around me. That's intraspecies socialization. And right, we're going to get some environmental socialization right here because she's going to learn to deal with an environment that's not the most fun thing. Like it takes a little bit of effort to get over this uh, uh, jump here. Come on, come on. And she did it. Now that's not a lot of effort, but it's some, you know. So now we're going to walk on this leash. And now walking on a leash is not, is not this dog's least favorite thing to do. But it's definitely not her most favorite thing to do. All these other dogs are able to come and go as they want. And all of a sudden I have her tied up. And she says, well, Stoney, I don't think that's fair. So part of the socialization process is to teach dogs that everything that happens in relation to other people or other dogs or other animals or, or uh, things in the environment, it's not going to be fair from your point of view. And that's, that's why it's so important to think in terms of teaching coping skills during the socialization process. I'm going to come over here. Now, look at this board. Now, this board, it doesn't make sense for this dog necessarily to get up on this board. Like, so she's watching Oliver. See, part, this is part of the socialization process. This is part of that Montessori process where I have some dogs that can do something and they serve as mentors for these young dogs. But the mentor effect is not strong enough to make her do that all on her own. So what I have to do is I have to socialize her to this environmental impediment. I have to desensitize her to being off of the ground. Now, once I start to desensitize her to that, uh, uh, that, that obstacle, now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start to restrict her options. So this is a whole big environment here. I've got a big yard. I've got a lot of stuff to do. I've got a lot of things. So from her perspective, naturally, she would choose to do whatever's the most fun. If you'll look over there, look over there at that dog, Eli, at Murphy. You see how Murphy just voluntarily chooses to hang out in those tunnels? He goes through those tunnels back and forth dozens and dozens of times a day because that's what he likes to do. And left to their own devices, dogs will kind of, in an environment, they will do what they like to do, what they enjoy doing, what they find easy. What your job is, is to teach them that it's not always the easy stuff or the fun stuff that gets done. It's the, it's the stuff that needs to get done. So part of your socialization process has to be limiting options and making the dog conquer things that would initially make them seem feel uncomfortable or insecure or produce a state of anxiety. And then uh, just, just when you're doing it, and I know sometimes it'll get, it'll get frustrating to you because your dog might not want to do this stuff. It might not want to walk on a leash when there's other dogs around. It might not want to come to you when there's other dogs around. <sighs> Don't get frustrated, but just make your dog understand that those things, they're not optional. You know, they're, 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 it's just not optional. And that's what's left out of too many 
socialization programs. You take your dog to a socialization class and all that's going on is your dog is running around playing with other dogs and not being held to any kind of standard. Okay, so like right here, you can see this is, look, see she's a little nervous about getting up here. And these other dogs are coming and going. People don't think about socialization in the right way. You can't just socialize a dog to like the, the playful aspects. You have to socialize a dog to the fact that in life there's just going to be a lot of things that they want to do or don't want to do that ends up having to be done anyway. Oh, come on Athena, get off there. So we're going to come down. Very nice. Okay, good. I'm going to come over here. Now, look here, do you see this resistance? Do you see this resistance from this young dog? She's 12 weeks old, and she doesn't understand what I want from her. And that's okay, because I'm gonna help her. I'm not gonna let her take the easy way out. I'm here to help these dogs learn to be physically and mentally resilient. You go on, dude. Good. And so this is a key. It's a real major key, guys, is proper socialization requires, look at that. That's proper socialization right there. You see how that dog is very secure and he's got good balance, good proprioception. He was able just to rock and roll right over there onto that tunnel. Come on, Blue Bill. Come on, come on. Very nice. Now our key socialization times, okay, ideally, we're, you, we're thinking in terms of, you know, pathogen-free world, we would be thinking in terms of starting all this stuff when the dogs were between seven and 12 weeks old. If there were no diseases, if there was no parvo, no distemper, no doggy flu, you see, I would have dogs like this 10-month-old dog, this 6-month-old dog, and this 12-week-old dog. There would also be some 7- or 8-week-old dogs out here, you know, and that's what I do with my own dogs, just to be honest, you know. Uh, but I know, I know you guys are worried, and, and the world's full of bad stuff, so we kind of miss out on that 7- to 12-week range, but there's no reason to miss out on the 12- to 18-week or 13- to 18-week range. So if you take your little dog for their 12-week checkup, and they get a clean bill of health, and you get your vaccinations, guys, then get your dog in a training program you know, not just a training program that talks about walking on the leash or sitting or downing, but a training program that teaches the dog to be physically and mentally resilient in a broad range of conditions, uh, you know, proper socialization. So like, look, she's stuck up here. This is scary. Okay, I understand that it's scary, but it's my job to show her at an early age that I would never put her in an environment that she can't master. So look, I'm going to give her a little treat. And I'm going to help her down here. Oh my gosh. Very nice. Oh, it's a very smart dog. Very nice. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Good. There we go. And now I'm going to give her a little break. Oh my gosh. Bluebell, you're so smart. You're such a good dog. Okay, so let's take a look at a 15 week old dog. Now, this is my dog. Oh, good dog. Now, in my opinion, this dog has been socialized exactly right. I got him at eight weeks old or so, and he came right over to the kennel and started interacting with a broad range of people and dogs and other types of animals. And he's been exposed to a lot of socialization, ranging from creeks to rivers to mud to four-wheelers. I mean, I've really literally, at already at 15 months old, this dog has been exposed to pretty much every situation that he's going to be exposed to as an adult. Now, I don't expect that much out of him at this age, okay? But I expect for him to make a little progress with each exposure. And already at 15 weeks old, look, he's pretty much mastered our basic vocabulary, our basic physical skills list, and he's, pre he's presenting himself as a pretty good mentor to these other dogs. See how when I go to working with uh, uh, Mr. No Name here, how Bluebell just follows right along. Okay? And I have had a sum total of zero problems right, training Mr. No Name because he just he never knew that he couldn't do stuff he would just come out here and he would look at the other dogs and uh, he would go well look uh, you know i want to try that and when i say he never knew that he couldn't do it what i mean is it's not that he didn't know that he would fail sometimes okay it's that he knew if he kept trying he would eventually be able to do what the big dogs do and that's the natural way dogs have learned since time immemorial you know when you have a bunch of uh, uh, wild dogs or wolves and they're hanging out, the young ones just, just look at the older ones and go, hey, I want to do that. I can do that, you know, and they just fall right along. So all I have to do 
is come in here and kind of put a few finishing touches you know on the formal part of the training but most of what's going on here is he's learning through the socialization and the mentoring process now so here's a dog let me see now we'll go in order so he's 15 weeks old oh come here this dog's five months old her name's athena come on athena oh now so athena came to us at uh what eli was she uh she was about four no i tell you what athena came to us when she was really young like 13 weeks old and she's just back here for boarding right now her uh, owner went to a soccer game or something now so this dog came here at about bluebell's age oh good girl athena and look she was busy running around eating sticks playing with the other dogs and when i asked her to come over here and start working she didn't mind because she's so well, so well socialized to this environment and all these other dogs around that she can concentrate and she can put a little bit of work in. That's so important, guys. You have to make the dogs understand that when they're out and they're doing activities, let's go, that sometimes they will have to forego one activity to do something that you would like for them to do in order to get back to that activity. So Athena is doing that perfectly. So I work her a little bit, and then I say, okay, listen, you can go back. Because that's how your real life is going to be, right? You're going to be out at the, at the river or the lake or the softball game, and you're going to need your dog to mind some, and your dog's going to be able to have to mind to the exclusion of all the distraction in the environment, right? But then once, once whatever section of time where you're needing focused attention from the dog is over, then the dog can just go back to hanging out and having a good time. So let's do it with another dog. Oh, come here, Astra. <laughs> Okay, so here's Astra, uh, and Astra, she didn't get the benefits of the early training and socialization that Mr. No Name got. She's about two weeks older than Mr. No Name, and we're going we're gonna to work walk her on the course, but you'll notice, like, she's not going to have as easy of a time with it. Like, look, we're going to come over here, and I'm going to be like, hey, come on, hop, hop, hop. And this is the resistance that I'm talking about that you'll get. <sighs> like, if we bring Astra out and there's not any no other dogs out, then like she doesn't have too much trouble with these, uh, with these obstacles. But look where I'm losing my attention right now. Now I'm losing my attention because she's not properly socialized to this high distraction environment. Okay, so I have to be very, very like um, calm with her and very, very focused. And I have to break all these things down into, oh, teeny tiny, oh, get back teeny tiny bite-sized pieces for Astra that I don't have to for Mr. No Name. So look right here. You see this? Look. I mean, she's not trying to be disobedient there. She's just like, hey, look, I, d I don't know that this is safe. I don't know that I can do that. And you'll watch when she moves. She doesn't move with the same level of confidence, you know, that say Mr. No Name moves. So I've just got to be very patient with her. But this is what the difference is. Just a few weeks of socialization goes from being super easy to really not that easy. Come on, Astra. Let's get up here. Oh, come on. Very nice. Very good. But Astra's making good progress. Good. You just have to be a lot more patient with her than I have to be with Bluebell or I have to be with Mr. No Name. Very nice. Come on, you can do it. Oh, very good dog. Very good. Good. Now, what's going on here, guys, is she's not only getting socialized to these physical impediments in her environment. She's getting socialized to having to interact with a person, and that person, I'm making her do this. You know, I've got her on this leash. I'm not letting her go do what she wants to do with these other dogs. And she's getting socialized to the idea that there's other dogs around, you know, and she doesn't just get to interact with them like her instinct tells her that she would like to. <laughs> and this is doable with a 17-week-old dog. It starts to get really hard when they get up into that adolescent phase. <laughs> Come here. And so you'll see, like, look, each element of this whole course is much more difficult with Astra than it is with Mr. No Name. And not so much because the learning's harder, okay? It's just because it's hard to understand how to use your body, right? And how to stay constant and how to concentrate to the exclusion of things in the environment. Good. Come on, come on. Very nice. Watch out, Big Murphy. Very nice. Now she's starting to settle in and do better. She's had to be real patient. 
Very nice. Come on, come on. Oh. Now, see this part right here where like sometimes these dogs get up here and it takes them a little while to learn how to kind of queue up and get in line. This is another part of this learning by doing that's really important here. <clears throat> This dog, when she gets older, is going to have to realize that she might be put in situations where other dogs, like maybe they, they take a little bit of liberty with her space, or maybe they try to take something away from her. And I need for that not to be uh, a novel situation when this dog is in the pubescent or post-pubescent period because these Rottweilers, listen, guys don't give them any second chances. If a dog's rude to her and she kind of she kind of gets a little bit aggressive with it and kind of puts it back in check, like she's going to get judged harshly. And so I want her to, from a young age, understand, come on, come on, that sometimes you'll be doing something and there'll be dogs around that are rude and they get in your space and they bully you a little bit and when they bully you you don't have to worry about it just let me take care of it it'll be fine it'll work out very nice astra good dog good dog up wait very nice okay so let's go up in age a little bit hey oliver what you doing oliver oh so now oliver is uh He's a six month old white lab. We'll take and walk him a little bit. Very nice. Now Oliver's doing his course about perfectly, but the first couple of weeks was really hard because he's 24 weeks old and he's right at that stage where like whenever we would ask him to do stuff with us, he would be like, you've got to be kidding. Why would I want to do stuff with you guys when there's all these other dogs to play with? You know, he especially likes girls. He wants to go romance the girls, you know, and I say, hey, <laughs> come over here. Let me tie you to me and let's walk around this course. And Oliver's like, why would I want to be tied to you, Stoney? I want to go chase these girls around. I want to go hang out with my buddies. I want to go play. And you can understand that. I mean, when you were a young teenager, did you want to like go hang out with your mom and go to uh, the quilting meetings? No, of course not. Wait. Good, easy. But we put in the work, and after a few weeks, Oliver got desensitized to all these other dogs around here. He got desensitized to all the people because, you know, he's a lab, and when people would come, he would jump and just be crazy because it was just all new and novel to him. And that socialization process desensitizes him to that. And then once he became a little bit more like relaxed, a little bit more desensitized to the high level of distraction around here, then it was pretty easy to start getting him to focus on doing his work, you know? And guys, this work is a lot harder than what you think. Like show him this right here, Eli. Like this corrugated metal ramp here, this is tough. It's got all these holes in it. We use this for a specific purpose. We use it because you know how you hear me talk about uh, toes to nose stimulation? We need the dog's mind and body working in synergy. And we need the dog's mind and body working in synergy in a distracting environment. It's easy. It's easy for a dog to come out here and master this stuff until you start letting the other dogs out. And when you start letting the other dogs out, then they're like, oh, wow, that's hard, Stoney. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can focus. I want to go play with my friends. Or sometimes it's not even they want to go play with their friends. Sometimes just being around the other dogs, that's it, makes them very anxious. Okay. And you know how that is. Maybe, you know, they talk about how public speaking is a big fear for people. Well, imagine you're a dog, you know, you, you've got this mismatch of uh, uh, emotions. You kind of want to go be a part of the big dog group, but you're also kind of, nope. You're kind of scared, you know, and, and afraid that you're not going to fit in. Dogs have all the same emotions that you have. And then like right there, you just think back to when you were a teenager and some adult was yapping on and on and on and your friends were out playing. Well, that's what he feels like right now. And so when, you know, I went to talk and there, he started to get up and walk away. I understand that. I identify with that. It's perfectly understandable from my point of view. It's just not acceptable. And I have to teach him that regardless of the level of activity in the environment, if I have something on my agenda, my agenda gets taken care of first. And again, that's part of the socialization process because you can teach a dog everything you need to teach them in your house. But they're not going to be able to perform until you go out and practice in a high distraction environment. You might as well just get that and just, just, just get ready for that. Guys, if you aren't practicing in a high distraction environment, then this is going to happen right here. And so, like, I'm in a training session right now. So I have the time to make this dog get back in position. Are you going to have the time when you're at the soccer game? Are you going to have the time when you're at the beach? 
Because if you don't make the time, then what you're going to have done is you're going to have taught your dog that they need to pay attention in your low distraction home environment, but at the beach or at the soccer game or at the barbecue, you will not enforce the rules. Okay? So that's why I'm on and on and on about this early socialization process. It's not just about me teaching the dog that I would like him to stay in this posture. It's about me teaching him that I would like for him to stay in this posture in the widest variety of environmental conditions possible. Okay. <laughs> Murphy, come on buddy. Oh, that's a good dog, Murphy. Now here we have Murphy. Now Murphy is uh, 10 months old. He's a silver lab. Good dog. And. Uh, Generally speaking, guys, when you're watching my channel, you'll see a lot of these younger dogs, like, uh, because I like to get them when it's easy to socialize them, easy to work with them. So I, I try to take them really in that 13 to 18 week range, and we take quite a few in the 18 to 20 week range. Uh, Murphy came to me at 10 months old, and, uh, <laughs> you know, like, we don't do a lot of them, okay? And here's why. Ha Eli, how much work is it to get this dog to do the course? A lot of work. A lot of work. I mean, it's literally crazy. When they're 10 months old, guys, they come down here and they've got so much stuff on their mind. They like, uh, they're just teenagers, you know? And so like anything that you tell them right off the bat, they're like, they think they know better, of course, just like kids. And uh, anything you want them to do, they want to do it on their own schedule. And then if they don't have a lot of experience, like using their mind and body together, simple things like this are very difficult. Okay. Now, this doesn't seem that hard. Again, I told you that earlier, but the reason it doesn't seem that hard is because we break it up into teeny tiny pieces. Murphy, these silver labs are very sensitive. Eli and I have worked on getting Murphy to walk down this thing every day for weeks, and I bet we've got 600 repetitions uh, of, of work on just walking down that ramp to finally get him to the point to where like, he's able to walk down the ramp and not be uh, bothered by it. Good boy, Murphy. And uh, so we get them here. Like, you know, like if I take a dog, of course, I'm going to get it to come and be still and have good manners. I'm going to teach it some voca vocabulary. It's going to be good with other dogs and stuff. But man, the work required is so much higher. We're talking exponentially higher levels of work. And uh, so that's what I'm trying to save you guys. I'm trying to save you guys that extra work plus the embarrassment, you know. It's embarrassing to go to the beach with your dog and have your dog run off and get in somebody's blanket and, or go to the barbecue and a dog knocks over the grill. Good. And all that can be avoided if you start with your training, your formal training early, and you incorporate lots and lots of informal activities in a wide ranging set of environmental conditions. Okay, so this guy, he's about perfect now, you know. Oh. Well, since you guys probably don't believe me that he's perfect, let's go over here and make him stay. Uh, but he's about perfect now. It just took me and Eli more work with just this one dog than any three of these other puppies that are here for training. Okay? And just the reason being is not because Murphy's a difficult dog. He's just at a developmental stage stay, where he's got partying on his mind. You know, he came down here, his parents brought him down from Indiana, and what he was thinking about is, oh, wow, I'm on uh, spring break. And that part was cool. You know, he likes being on spring break. He likes hanging out. But the reality is, is that he <laughs> found out quick that he had to do a little bit of work on spring break. <laughs> and he's like, work? What do you mean, Stoney? What do you mean I have to get out and I have to come when you call me and I have to walk politely on that leash and I have to like uh, conquer those impediments? I'm, I'm here's here to party. I'm just here to have a good time. And I had to explain to him that that kind of good time is predicated on work because here we always put the work in first. And for, so for the first couple of weeks, he would just look at me and Eli like, y'all can't be serious. Don't you know we're just going to we're just going to hang out and party today, chase girls? And we'd be like, nope, dude, we're going to do that after the work. Now, what I'm going to do, the last dog I'm going to show you is a dog that I just got in. It's uh, maybe five and a half months old. It's a German short hair pointer, and it's extremely under socialized. And it's, you know, uh, you're going to see the difference between, say, Mr. No Name, uh, who at 15 weeks old is about perfect, okay, um, and uh, Blue Bell, who at 12 weeks old is about perfect, and Athena, who at 20 weeks old is about perfect, okay, and Astra, who's making some decent progress, and a completely under socialized dog. So I'm going to go get him right now. Okay, guys, so here's Shep. Uh, he's a five month old, maybe a little over five month old German short hair pointer. And you'll notice how these other dogs are like kind of smelling him and, 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 and looking at him funny. Okay, well, that's because he's nervous and under socialized. And one of the things that you have to really be careful about when you're doing your early training with your dog 
If you don't get them out around lots of other kinds of dogs, then the first time you stick them in a situation where it's real social, then they're going to act nervous. Their body posture is going to look nervous. They're going to be releasing pheromones that let the other dogs know that they have a high anxiety level. And that's going to draw attention, you know. And unfortunately, what happens, okay, is if you're the nervous kid in class, you get picked on a little bit. And so by not taking your dog and making sure that they have good social etiquette and good social confidence, right, you're kind of, you're kind of sentence, sentencing them to at least, you know, some unpleasant experiences in the future when you first get them out and go to do, go and to do stuff with them. Now, so if we take Shep, like in there in my office and get out some treats, uh, you know, Shep will sit and he'll kind of walk on the leash and, and uh, he'll go lay down on his bed, but like, he just doesn't know what to do when we get out here around all these other dogs and he draws attention to himself and then when these dogs come over and give him attention then he gets real nervous and he alternates between being extremely afraid and peeing on the ground or running off if i didn't have this long line on him right here he would just run away from all these other dogs and then eli and i've got to walk around trying to get him and when we're trying to get him it makes him feel that much more nervous well just imagine you know, if you were in a situation where you didn't have a big fence around you and your dog got afraid and it was afraid for you to come, come get it, that it could get run over, it could cause, get itself in any number of bad situations, okay? So look at this dog. He's 20 weeks old, you know, and maybe 22 weeks old, and he just doesn't know what to do with himself. If I come over here and try to get him to walk on the leash, look, he doesn't even know what that means. His tail's tucked, his ears are back. If I come over here and I'm like, hey, look, Come here, hop, hop. You know, try to get him to jump over one of these obstacles or, or walk politely in between these planters. You know, this just gets dangerous. <laughs> it's, it's dangerous because I'm gonna get this leash tied up around me. Come on, buddy, you can do it. And so this right here, just, just getting him to where he's comfortable around these other dogs, for us, it's gonna be more than probably a week or 10 days worth of work. For you guys, I mean, I don't even know how long it would take because how are you going to, like, Eli and I are going to get hours and hours a day of dog and uh, people interaction for this guy. That's hard to squeeze in. Like, if you've been at work and you come home, where are you going to go find, uh, you know, a couple of dozen dogs for your dog to be around, you know? Where are you going to find a big open spot where you can let them run around and drag a long leash but not be worried about them getting run over? And all of this... It didn't have to happen, guys. It didn't have to happen. You didn't have to have a 20-week-old dog uh, that doesn't know how to walk on a leash and doesn't know how to interact with other dogs and doesn't know how to keep its feet on the ground around people. So what I want you guys to take away from today's lesson is that, uh, yes, it's very important to get to do your formal aspects of your training with your young dogs. But if you have a dog at seven to 12 weeks or 13 to 18 weeks or 18 to 24 weeks, like, look, don't think that you've got all the time in the world to uh, get them socialized properly, okay? Don't forego your socialization opportunities to work on your formal training because out of the two, just getting your dog out in the real world is the more important thing, okay? This dog, like I told you, in my office, if we get some treats out, like he's kind of got decent manners and he'll walk a little bit on a leash and he'll kind of sit and stay and he'll go get on his bed. But look what he's doing out here in real life. I put him around these other dogs and he's so nervous, I can't even get him off my lap. You don't want to have this happen when you first take your dog out to the barbecue or to the soccer game or to the beach, okay? So if you don't want a dog that has to sit in your lap through a whole soccer game, okay, do not neglect your socialization as early as you can. Seven to, tweak, seven to 12 weeks, ideal. 13 to 18 weeks is what you're going to be able to do because of vaccinations and stuff. 18, 24 weeks, you're behind. <laughs> you got to get going. If you wait till 24 weeks, weeks listen guys you've just made a lot of work for yourself and in dog training the bill always gets paid always remember that you're going to pay the bill you can either pay it up front with a little bit of putting the work in or you can pay it for the whole rest of your life and so always prevention is better than cure so get out today before spring gets here and get that dog socialized all right i'll see y'all next week